We want to thank EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. I've never tried to drill sheet metal like this, so I kind of think it's not going to work. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to our off-grid homestead. We're building from scratch here in North Idaho. Give you just a little pan around here really quick. We're going to be working on putting the siding on the back side of the garage. We're going to start over in that corner over there. Colin's just getting the plastic wrapped the wrap off of there because we really need this piece to get the whole thing started so we get it set right this is the metal material that's going on the west side of the garage and i really don't know for sure why it took them so long to get it to us but at this point i'm just super grateful that it's here watson ray are hanging out with me you know you've been doing a lot of painting when your animals are wearing paint Whoa, Watts, I wanted to show him your painted tail. He doesn't want you to see. He's embarrassed. <laughs> there it is. Wow, guys, you got another mouse. Good job, kitties. Oh, those bees, man. Woo. That is the main reason we have those little kitties. They're earning their keep. So let's zoom around the corner here. Woo! Colin has already got the metal around this big window here. So we still have the door to trim out in metal as well as this window. The metal siding goes all the way down over the garage and onto, this is like the bathroom window here. The metal will go to this, about this line right here. And then we're gonna do board and batten for the rest of the way down. So it basically mirrors the front side of the house. We're gonna be putting a porch along here as well. Before we can put up the sheets of siding, we have to finish a few tedious jobs and Colin's working on one of those right now. Here we have the two different types of metal trim. This one is kind of like a, something that the metal goes and sits in and this goes along the bottom of everything and the sides of the windows and all. This is the other kind and it goes along the top of all the windows. The metal will come down and just sit on it and this way it kind of faces up like this so that whenever water goes and hits right here it just can run out instead of getting stuck in this groove 42 and 11 sixteenths what you got up there water <laughs> looks like you're knighting him sir watts mouse killer Right now we're getting this top piece put up and all the rest of the metal will slide up into there. Nope. <laughs> Woo, I can't do it. They're pretty tough. All right, Colin. Sorry, <laughs> you're gonna have to do all the jelly. <laughs> This is just an extra piece, so we need to get this off of here. I'm gonna be up on the deck, huh? Let's see if it works. No, it's from your side. Give that a quick yank. Oh, it didn't work. Is that one gonna work? Quick. Yeah. It looks like we can put our bottom trim right at the uh, bottom of the OSB. We're gonna double check. We're not gonna put a ton of screws in it right yet until we make sure that everything's gonna fit the way it's supposed to. I will put the cut end up into this little slot here because then you won't see it. Your savior is here. Oh, I thank you. Your special tape. 
whoa, yes. She found our special Tyvek tape. Thank you very much, Shows. I really appreciate that. I'm really not your savior. I know. Jesus is the only savior. I know, but you <laughs> saved us in the tape. Okay. So you're like savior with a small s. Okay, I could go with that. All right, Colin's gonna put the tape on along here just to make sure we seal that up where that lower trim goes. And then we'll be able to start fitting the siding. We're gonna have to do some tricky work because we've got this penetration right here going through the house. I think we're gonna have to cut out a slot to slide it down it and then slip a piece in underneath. I think, I don't know exactly what we're gonna do yet. All right, we've got a shorter piece here that Colin's holding up. It's sitting right on top of our LB that's coming out of the house here. And that way we can mark it here and then we can transfer it to the other one because all of the ripples are all gonna line up. Hopefully then we can cut out the slot so we can slide that other piece down on here. I know that a lot of you are thinking about preparedness and emergency situations such as power outages from severe weather events. Both of these units would be a great backup power source for you. One is the EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 and this one is the EcoFlow Delta Pro. They are both solar generators or portable power stations so you have basically an unlimited amount of power as long as you have sun. They can be charged off of the wall in your house or they can be charged in your car. They are extremely quiet especially when you compare that to a gas power generator. They both have a handle that comes out of the front and wheels here on the back side. So let's talk a little bit about the differences between the two. The EcoFlow Delta Pro 3 is pretty unique because it has 240 volts built in. You can do 120 or you can do 240 and that is really important to us because our well has a 240 volt pump in it. This unit here does not do 240 volts right out of the box. You can add another unit to it, combine them together and get 240 volts, but one unit by itself does not. The Delta Pro 3 will go up to 4,000 watts and you can scale that by adding more units to it up to 12 thousand watts of power. It has a 4,000 watt hour battery in it and you can scale that up by adding more batteries as well up to 48,000 watt hours of power. It has seven fast charging methods and a five-year warranty. So now let's talk about the EcoFlow Delta Pro. It'll do 3,600 watts of power coming out of it to power whatever you need in your house and you can expand that up to 7,200 watts. It has a 3.6 kilowatt battery in it and you can expand that out to 25 kilowatts of power. A few of the appliances that we would run with these would be, number one is the well. Make sure that we've got water at our house. Then we've got our refrigerator in the kitchen. We've got our deep freeze in the uh, garage. And then we also have our Starlink internet and our security system. So guys, stay safe and stay powered during severe weather events with an EcoFlow unit like one of these. They are safe and reliable to use indoors. There is a link down in the description below along with a coupon code. So if you're thinking about getting a backup power solution like one of these, check out the link in the description below. We're gonna go ahead and get back to work. We marked the position of that LB as far as it goes up vertically. Now we've got it marked horizontally and we'll be able to mark out exactly where we want it to go. All right, so we've got our horizontal top of the LB marked here and we've got our two marks for the vertical cuts. Now we just slide this down to the bottom, mark it there, and then take our level and we can line up these marks draw a straight line and cut it. So this is our 10 snips power shears. It works pretty good. It's a little bit difficult to get like the pattern of moving it up and down to get going across all of these things. But when we get there, we'll practice again and we'll get it down. Line it up on here. Now let's see if we can find a scrap piece of metal that we can put behind here to cover that up. So this we'll be able to put behind it and it'll cover up that slot.
So I think we've got the start of it figured out. We've got to get our quarter inch sheet metal screws for the siding and uh, kind of get it fit in place there, make sure everything's plumb, and then we can continue on going down the side. We've got our backing behind the LB there, and then we're gonna put this piece up and see how it fits next to it. And so one thing that I learned doing the roofing and doing this siding, when you overlap this, right, this one is gonna overlap this one, and you wanna do that for the way that you want it to look the best. In other words, from which direction? For me, I want this to look the best from the porch over there. When somebody stands on the porch and they look down the house, Coming this way, I don't want them to see all of the seams where this overlaps this. And so we're doing it this direction so that this one overlaps here and then the seam is down in a valley. And if it's a little bit off or there's a little tiny bit of a gap there, you won't be able to see it from that direction. But if you walked around this way, you'd be able to see it. Just fixing a little breakfast. Wanna go out and check on the guy's progress? Come on, Dexter. Come on, buddy. Wow. You guys already got stuff up. It looks so good. Metal's a lot faster than lap siding, huh, Colin? Yeah. <laughs> so we're just marking where we want to put the screws. We kind of figured out where they go based on that window over there so that the line can continue on and not change with the window because the window got in the way. Our next piece is going to go over this piece of wire right here sticking out. That's actually for the Mr. Cool for the apartment. We use the same system of using a smaller piece of metal to mark everywhere where it goes. And we came up with this little square right here. We're gonna try to drill it out with a hole saw. I've never tried to drill sheet metal like this, so I don't know. I kind of think it's gonna get just caught and it's not gonna work. These are Harbor Freight hole saws. Maybe they're not really designed to cut through any type of metal. But they did it. So it did it, but it kind of took off the tips just a little bit there. I forget which one it was, but it might have been this one. I drilled through the steel well casing on our well to put in the pitless adapter with a Milwaukee bit, and it drilled right through that uh, steel casing. I don't know if the Harbor Freights are made as well as Milwaukee. Turned out great. The hole is right where we want it. We're gonna go ahead and mark it, screw it, and then I'll show you how we're gonna start that window. It just gets better, better with you. We go together. You might be wondering what Jules is. She is actually running to town to um, go to Badger and get the roofing for the porch. Check out the porch over here. It's, oh, you can't really see it from here, but it's ready for roofing. So she's picking up the roofing. She's also going to Toyota to get the truck serviced because we're going to Tennessee to take set to college. We're gonna leave Colin and Sarah behind and he's gonna continue working on the siding here as we go there. So we're gonna get as much as we can done today and then tomorrow morning, we're going to Tennessee and he's gonna finish up the siding. <laughs> We're making really good progress here. Check it out. We're already up to here with that. We've got the slot cut here for the gas pipe and we've got all of our vents done over here. This is like, this is my shade, but we've got our vents all done along here. So we're ready to do that. Got a little bit of more trim to do, but we are super close guys to being like getting a lot done. In the last couple of videos, Seth and I, well, that's a few videos. Seth and I were up in Alaska. We were on a motorcycle trip from here to Alaska. We drove like 6,000 miles to get there and back. While we were gone, man, the greenhouse has been kind of going crazy. Cucumbers galore. All right, look at these guys. Jules just put these in here for fun because sunflowers are cool. But man, look at the size of the head on that thing. Basil's going kind of crazy and other spices in there. We've got quite a lot of tomatoes growing. Look at these guys. 
We're growing vertical tomatoes, so they're going up these strings. There's like these clips right there. You clip them to the string and wrap them up. This one right here might need to be clipped onto there pretty soon. Cabbage, okra's going good. I mean, it's growing good for North Idaho. I don't know that it's growing good for like you folks down in Alabama and Mississippi and stuff, but there's okra on there. And I ate some of it last night and it was delicious. Other things here, peas are nearly done. Pinto beans are nearly done as well. And look at this, you dry them right on here. They're drying. And inside of these guys, man, are pinto beans. So maybe we'll do a, we'll do a pot of chili from those beans for church potluck. Wouldn't that be cool? A pot of chili beans from our own pinto beans. Marty, Julie, and Seth are now gone on their way to Tennessee. If you guys didn't know, that's actually where I'm from, where I was born and raised. I've got to continue putting up all of this metal siding here. It looks great. It's super cool stuff, but we've got to take it from here all the way over there. Thankfully, not all the way to the end of the house, just to this point right here. It really is only about half of the wall left that we have, or that I have to do, I guess, but it's not going to be easy. There's a whole lot of obstacles that I have to cut around. First, I've got to cut out this hole bigger and then put a mounting block there and a electrical box for a light. Got to put a mounting block up there for a security camera. Up there, we'll have to cut the siding a little bit weird. Down here too, have to cut around this crawl space vent, this dryer vent, and that crawl space vent. Not to mention, there's a window here and a door there. All that being said, I just got to take it one piece at a time and all those obstacles are actually going to kind of make it a little bit fun. It's like a puzzle, and I like puzzles. First, I'm going to get these two mounting blocks done. All right, so I've gotten almost all of the trimming done that has to go around like the mounting block and the door. I'm almost ready to just put the sheeting up inside the house. The last piece I've got to do is the piece that goes up here on the top of the door that uses this type right here. It has the lip on it that goes down. The only problem is this is the last of it right here and that's not gonna be enough. Mr. Marty, before they all left, told me exactly what to do. I'm gonna take some of this right here that has the groove in it and bend this part down here using like a hammer and the tin benders or whatever they are, these things. That ought to be pretty fun. And then after that, home free all the way till the end, get to put up all the siding and it'll be done. I've got my piece now cut to the right length to go above the door. Now I gotta flatten this out. We tested this out earlier on a smaller test piece and it's a lot easier to do it on a small piece than a big piece. Oh well, it'll just take some persistence. I'm finding that it's pretty hard to start the bend with this thing or to unbend it. The hammer started it off pretty well and then coming in after there's a little bit of progress with these, just using them to clamp down is a lot easier. I might have to work on that section more with the hammer. Right, it's working pretty well. If you see there, it's not quite flat, but it sure isn't a 90 degree angle anymore. I think I'm gonna go back to the hammer. Oh yeah, look at that. That worked really quite well. It's like cold blacksmithing. <laughs> it doesn't need to be flat, it needs to be 
angled down just on this edge a little bit. I think I'm gonna stick it up there and then use the trim itself after it's in place to put the right bend on it exactly where it needs to go. We'll see how that works. I got it up there and it's not perfect, but man, it's pretty good and I'm pretty pleased with it. Set my sails and wait for the wind to blow. Scatter the miles to find in my way to go. Close your eyes and chase what you see. The rest of our days, no more losing sleep. No matter where we go, you make this feel like home. This last piece went up really smoothly. It fits just right, but I'm really worried about the piece that's gonna have to go here. The way that this works is all of this trim right here, the metal slides in behind it. It just sits on top of the tops here, but it has to slide in here and here. For the next piece, it's gonna have to go out about to over there at the end of that tape measure, which means it's gonna have to go all the way around that mounting block right there. And that means I can't just cut it and then slide it in. It's gonna have to surround it and somehow fit behind all these grooves. That is gonna be tricky by itself, but the real problem is it also has to fit in up here, has to fit between the top and that mounting block. It has to go all the way down to the bottom in this narrow little bit right here between this last piece and the door. And it has to fit between the door trim and this mounting block trim, which is really narrow. I don't really know how I'm gonna do that. That's gonna take some figuring out and this one's gonna probably take a long time to cut and each cut is gonna have to be perfect. We'll see if I can do it. Whew, I just spent a long time measuring out these obstacles, marking it down on the uh, siding, on the metal siding, re-measuring, cutting it out on the siding, re-measuring the obstacles. And I did that for each of the three obstacles. So that just took a long time. And this is what we have right here. A really long and narrow strip with an even narrower strip right there for the cutout for that mounting block where the uh, light is going to go. This big hole right here is for the door. And then this center cutout is for a security camera. I'm really worried about that fitting in. And this right here, it's going to be really hard to fit into the grooves of the trim. Let's test it and see if I did well. This really narrow part right here makes it really hard to hold because it's kind of fragile right there and I don't want it to bend. So I've got a plan. I'm calling on the big guns. Hi. <laughs> Sarah's gonna give me a hand with this piece because this is gonna be really hard. I'm thinking that you get on this ladder right here. Okay. And I'll get on this ladder right here and we'll do our best to get it up. Okay. Let's see. I feel like somebody's gonna get hurt. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what I came out here to do, so I'm wearing flip flops right now. What's gonna really help me is if you focus on this spot right here. Okay. And make sure that it's not bending and like tell me if I'm doing something bad. Well, the metal is all up. The project is done and I think it looks pretty good. I like it a lot. What do you think, Watts? I've never worked with metal siding like this before and it was fun. It was a cool new experience, but I have to say I'm kind of ready to move on to the next project. It took a lot longer than I was expecting to get just this bit done here, but man, it looks good. That'll do it for this project. What do we say, Watts? Keep smiling.